Situation Report I recently left my job as an auto inspector in pursuit of a career in real estate videography. Which is great, I love what I do and would love to do more of it. However, the housing market pulled a hamstring getting excited off the line. So now it's going real slow and coach is pissed. Which means that currently I have a lot of free time on my hands between shoots. Now naturally the first instinct is to day drink. But after watching what that's done to Bam Mom Jera over the past few years, I decided to steer clear for a while and do something different. But I've been doing something different for 17 years. So I hopped on my computer and looked up some hobbies. Now I wanted to exclude from doing the obvious things like disc golf, trampoline dodgeball and dogging. I wanted to do something a little closer to home. Cycle. One of the first things most kids are taught to do is ride a bike, which would become the main mode of transportation throughout childhood, except for that one weird kid that rode a ripstick. But at this age, riding on the road seems a little out of question unless you're vegan, enjoy raging at strangers, or Dutch. So the decision was obvious. Mountain biking it was. Nothing bonds you with nature quite like face planting directly into it. I love this idea of wisping down a steep mountain trail, especially since there's none of the stone Xanax up drivers of Southern California around. Just you, the mountain, and whatever energy bar you're eating. I am hooked on this idea. I want to do this, but I'm broke and clueless. So where to start? Give me that fucking bike. Um, the linkage goes through the frame. Okay, NASA does that. $50 off. Savings are immense here. I could have picked a cheaper hobby, to be honest. So from what I understand, to get a good mountain bike, and by good, I mean something that has a full set of suspension, non-Chinese knockoff parts, you know, the good stuff. That's gonna cost anywhere from around $1,000 up to $3,000. The step below that is gonna be your entry level and beginner mountain bikes, and they can cost anywhere from $400 up to around $700. Now those bikes are just as good and as well built as the more expensive ones. However, they do not have the same bells and whistles, of course, including a full set of suspension. They usually just have the front and they don't have any in the back, making them hardtails. But none of what I just said matters to me at all because this month I've got tags I have to pay for, car problems I need to get fixed, and uh, a parking attendant I'll probably have to bribe shortly. So that means I'm gonna have to have a pretty tight budget for this project. I'm thinking around $300. So if I wanna get anything decent for that price, and by decent I mean something that doesn't have Disney themed stickers, I'm gonna have to shop used, which means going on Craigslist and OfferUp. Shopping used isn't necessarily a bad thing. With a budget of $700, you can get a pretty serious buy. Like this specialized downhill for only $675. But with my measly $300 budget, I'd be better off picking something up from the river bottom again. And my last ditch effort to narrow down the search results didn't help. Fuck you, Buster. This is what I bought. A Mongoose XR Pro. Now you're probably wondering why it's in a bike shop, and I'll explain in due time. But first, let's see how it rides. Uh, oh, this thing's got some problems. It's been trashed. I'm not gonna lie, I probably shouldn't have bought this bike. It was an impulse buy. I saw it on Craigslist the morning I bought it. You hear that? That is the sound of a bad used purchase. Okay, the bike is in pretty rough shape, and I definitely have a knot in my stomach about the $250 I paid for it. Although, despite its issues, it's still miles ahead of the back alley jacked, yard sale quality bikes I grew up riding. You see, when you go from using your dad's lead framed 1990s giant to something newer, lighter, and more purpose built, it's a lot of goddamn fun. Oh. Hell yeah. Even though it is, after all, an expensive Walmart bike. The XR Pro comes with this lightweight aluminum frame and it makes bunny hops really easy to do. And the bouncy suspension makes the smallest rise at a concrete slab feel like a mega ramp. I wonder if all the people that have mugged this place saw this can concrete ramp. Oh! Oh! Off-road tires. See if my off-road tires can handle this shrubbery. What's going on? Ah, doing good. Just doing some sick mountain biking, you know? Look at all this trash just scattered on there. Don't people know that's what the ocean is for? All was going so well until... I'm an idiot. So last night, I took the bike out for a quick ride around the block, just enjoying my new purchase despite its problems. And there's this thing that I like to do where I like to put 
all the weight on the front of the handlebars, get the back wheel in the air and skip it over to the side. There's no reason to do it apart from the fact that it makes me feel like a pro, okay? So when I landed, the back wheel completely buckled and initially I thought, oh, I broke the rim. Uh, but instead, it just fell out of the, the sockets in the bicycle frame. Now the reason that happened was because when I landed, the plastic bolt that connects to the other side of the rod that connects the wheel to the frame flew out, went miles away. So far away, in fact, I couldn't find it. I got the flashlight out, looked into the bushes, nothing. So that's completely gone missing, and therefore I can't tighten the rear wheel onto the bike. That, and when I landed, I landed on the derailleur, so that's nice and bent and fucked as well. So obviously the bike is in a pretty unrideable shape right now. Uh, however, instead of buying the parts that I need online, I'm actually going to go to a bike shop instead. Not only to buy the parts that I need, but also I want to get their thoughts on the XR Pro. Have a look around, see what they suggest I should get fixed on it um, alongside the obvious. So I'm going to go and Google, look up some local bike shops and uh, maybe head to one later this week. Putting a bike into the back of a hatchback it's just one of the most challenging things in the world. It's like uh, those electronic mazes you played with as kids. Something gets caught, something gets stuck, and you're kind of pushing it through and the handlebars will bounce. Pain in the ass. Nothing's going right for me this morning at all. <laughs> So, uh, how much would you pay for a bike like this? Um, brand new, this bike was probably close to 200 bucks or something. I paid 250. Really? Brand Used. new? Yeah. Used? Oh, <laughs> man. The gentleman to my right is named Tanner. I asked him what was wrong with the XR Pro and what I should get fixed. This is what he said. The bad thing is if you put a new chain on this, you might need a new cassette because a new chain will like pull out any imperfections in your cassette. Yeah, I'll probably have to get a new hanger. This thing's pretty bad. Spring on the derailleur. Um, it gave out, so this is upside down. The bottom loose, bracket, right super right loose. Out. So uh, when you're using the brake, the rotor is just grinding on the caliper. And the bike's just rain from in short, there was a lot wrong. The bike functioned, but at this point it seemed as safe to ride as Jimmy Savile's boat. So while Tanner did his best to fix the bike, I confided in Gary, who very kindly showed me some of the best local trails to start riding on. After an hour or so, Tanner was finished. He replaced the derailleur, the chain, adjusted the front brakes, reshaped the hanger, and many other things. Okay, so we just got done at Cyclery USA. Bike is back there in working condition, thanks to Tanner. We got it back together into running condition, which is great. That means I can start hitting some trails. This is the wrong way. Yep, gone. Oncoming lane. If I was playing Burnout 3, I'd get an extra bit of boost. So big thanks again to Tanner, Gary, and Jim for the help. It was awesome. I really enjoyed my time there, and I recommend anyone watching this head around to Cyclery USA for service on their bikes. Oh, I've got some bad news. I've got some really bad news. I get a call yesterday morning from my girlfriend to come outside and have a look at the bike rack. And it's been stolen. And this isn't a joke. This isn't part of the video. This, my bike's been legit jacked. Her bike too. And her was, hers was like a $90 Huffy. So there's that money down the drain. Not like I wasn't already because it was such a piece of shit. But um, yeah, it's just... It's a real disappointment because, you know, the bike wasn't perfect I, and I didn't want to get a perfect bike. Um, if anything, it was great for this video because it shows that it shows what happens when you buy a cheap mountain bike. And I was looking forward to upgrading it and getting getting it back into, um, a, a, if not better than factory spec and having some great experiences with the bike and going out and like my next plan was to go out with um, a mountain bike riding community hang out with them, do some shenanigans, kind of like I used to do in my old motor vlogs. But uh, that's all gone now, since some of the local hoodlums or vagrants decided they um, they wanted a Mongoose XR Pro. So it's a real shame. Uh, there's nothing much I can do, but bikes get stolen so often um, out here. So there's that's it, that's it, that's it for the video. Um, the best job I can, I guess, to end on a positive note, is uh, I'll just tell you what I learned about mountain biking so far. From what I learned this far, I would say 
tell you if you're looking to getting into this, set your, your used mountain bike budget to around $600. You will get something very good for that amount of money. It does sound kind of expensive because like me, I wasn't used to spending that much money on a bicycle, uh, but you will get something very worth your money and very good for that amount of money on uh, on Craigslist or OfferUp. Or you could just buy new and avoid the guessing game altogether, but that's what I would recommend. And and that's about all I can tell you so far. I didn't get very far into my adventure, which again is, is a huge disappointment and a big blow, uh, but that's where it goes sometimes. Thank you all for watching. Uh, thank you all for making it to the end. The unfortunate end, that is. Don't forget to dislike, don't comment, and of course, don't subscribe. And I'll see you all uh, next time.